think I see this a little differently uh, because the definition that Jack provided really does, uh, it, it's limited in, in precisely the opposite way, in, in which the way he framed it, uh, police authority, in other words, the power of the state, uh, is necessary for the expression of political extremism, and, and I don't think that's true. Uh, I think that um, extremism is, is almost a, a state of mind, uh, and it, it can be reflected through state power and through state authority, <clears throat> but I think it can also be reflected um, through other sorts of, um, uh, of practices uh, by all kinds of non-state actors. And so I'd like to say what I think are the, um, the two principal characteristics of extremism, political extremism, and, and really other forms of it, even religious extremism, is, is, is very similar. Um, the first is not just uh, you know, a, a sense of, uh, of uh, excluding of other points of view, which I, I agree with, but it's more than that. Um, I, I think that political extremism is expressed through um, mechanisms, including just discursive mechanisms, including just rhetorical devices, uh, as well as uh, f other forms of coercion, including state power, that serve to limit the range of choices available to other people. That, that is the first characteristic. Uh, I think uh, it's a characteristic that all extremist uh, political actors have shared um, all throughout human history. The second um, characteristic that I identify with political and other forms of extremism is irresponsibility. I, I think uh, political extremists are almost always so devoted to their ideas that they behave ultimately in an irresponsible way because they have a disregard for the consequences of their actions that, uh, that are informed by their um, extreme devotion to their extreme ideas and because they think uh, out of context. Art Torres gave a very good example of this when he referred to zero tolerance policies and zero tolerance legislation shutting down the thought process and shutting down the debate. And I think that that, that sort of um, extremist policy or that kind of extreme version of the law where no um, allowance for context or mitigation is permitted, uh, and indeed the, the process of judgment is foreclosed by a, a prejudgment of zero tolerance, is a very good example of the irresponsibility and disregard for uh, consequences and context that I think you find uh, in political extremists. Uh, one final uh, observation. Um, if you look at our own government, the, the present Bush administration, I think you can see um, tendencies and actors that are plainly uh, extremists, in, in, in fact, uh, in some cases, a very rarefied and dangerous form of political extremism. I think you can identify other tendencies and actors that, are, uh, in, that don't, I think, qualify under my definition. So even within a state, and even within a particular administration of a state, say the first four years of the Bush uh, administration we've just seen, uh, you know, there's, there's extremist tendencies and, and non-extremist tendencies, and uh, they, uh, they don't sit very well together, I think. Okay. Uh, yes, please, I was going to ask you to, please. Okay. Uh, I would add that I think one other